Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at why the average revenue curve is greater than the marginal revenue curve for firms that have a downward sloping demand curve. This is different from perfect competition, where the average revenue is equal to the marginal revenue since price is constant. That makes sense. But we see that for a firm that wants to increase total revenue by lowering price, that price is not constant, and that has a, an effect on the additional revenue gained when the firm lowers price to sell an additional unit of output. And in this, we are, we're also going to take into consideration, or we're going to assume that firms are, non, are, are not discriminating. They're not price discriminating. And with this assumption of non-price discrimination, it explains why the AR curve is greater than the MR curve. So on the right side of the screen, we have a downward sloping demand curve in blue. Demand is equal to our average revenue, which is equal to price, which we can see here illustrated. We know that total revenue equals price times quantity and average revenue is total revenue divided by the quantity of output, which is the same as price times quantity of output divided by quantity of output. So those quantities cancel, and we see that average revenue is essentially price, which makes sense, right? Price reflects uh, what consumers are willing and able to spend for a particular good at various prices, which is what the demand curve is essentially representing. On the left side of the screen, we're going to make a few calculations. Um, we're going to be looking at price, lowering price over time, what's the impact on quantity demanded. We'll calculate what the total revenue is, and then, then what is the marginal revenue and then the average revenue. Now let's keep in mind that marginal revenue is equal to the change in the total revenue divided by the change in the quantity of output. So let's, let's go ahead and make these calculations. So we're gonna start off at a price of $11. And at $11, we see that there's no one willing and able to spend uh, for this particular good or service. So the quantity demand is at zero, which we've plotted right here, okay? Um, total revenue is price times quantity. So price times quantity, or 11 times zero, is zero. We can't calculate the marginal revenue because there's nothing to compare it to. And the average revenue, as we've seen, price, is equal to average revenue or total revenue divided by the quantity of output or zero divided by zero, which is zero. Okay, so the firm wants to sell an additional unit of output or they want to at least sell one unit of output. So they lower the price from 11 to $10. And here they have one consumer willing able to spend on that good or service. So we've plotted that point here, all right? At $10, there's a unit sold of one, right? right at this point. 10 times one will equal our total revenue, which is 10. And then we can illustrate the change in the, the total revenue, right? The change from zero to 10 is 10, and the average revenue, which is equal to price, is 10. So that becomes this point right here. At $10, the first unit is sold, and we see that the AR curve is equal to the MR curve, right? So there's no divergence yet. But the, the firm would like to sell more, all right? Not just to one person, but in order to do that, they're gonna have to lower price. So they lower price from 10 to nine, but in this model, we're assuming non-price discrimination. The firm can't charge one person $10 and another person $9, <laughs> because the person who paid 10 would complain, why are they paying an additional dollar? So if the firm is not going to price discriminate, they sell the product to both consumers at the same price of nine. That's the assumption. So they're able to sell two units at $9, both of these people paying $9. So nine times two is 18. And then we see that the marginal revenue or the change from total revenue um, from $10 to $9 is $8. And the average revenue again is $9 or the total revenue of 18 
divided by the quantity of outputs, 18 divided by 2 is 9. Now let's take a look. All right, we see that at $9, all right, two units are sold, which is plotted on our demand curve, but the marginal revenue at two units is 8. All right, so at $2, here is 8. So the marginal revenue curve is beginning to become less than the average revenue. All right. Due to this non-price discrimination, we have lowered the price for all consumers. And so the firm is losing the opportunity to charge one person 10 and another person $9. And the marginal revenue begins to diverge as a result. Let's keep going. The firm would like to sell an additional unit, but in order to do that, they have to sell all three units at $8 because they can't charge the first person $10 and the second person $9 because they would complain. So we're going to assume that all three consumers are only paying $8. 8 times 3 is 24. And the average revenue is total revenue divided by the quantity of output or 24 divided by 3, which is 8. What's the change? The change is the difference between 18 and 24 is 6. So when we look at that third unit, the margin revenue is now $6. It is beginning to diverge. All right? And we can illustrate that divergence by drawing in the line. All right? It's beginning to diverge. Then, we can can, then we'll continue. The firm would like to sell an additional unit, but they can't price discriminate. They can't charge the first person 10 second person nine and the third person eight, they have to charge all four consumers $7. So the price is dropped again. Now it's seven times four, which is 28. And average revenue is total revenue divided by the quantity of output, 28 divided by four, which is seven. Okay, what is the change, let's use a different color here, between 24 and 28? What's the difference? It is four. So here we can see that when we sold four units, the marginal revenue is four. So here we have four units, and the marginal revenue is $4. And we see that MR curve continuing to diverge from the AR curve. And then we continue, All right? The firm wants to sell another unit, so they lower price from seven to six. They can't price discriminate, charging the first person 10, and the second person nine, and the third person eight, and the uh, fourth person, seven. They have to charge everyone the same price. So here we get to the fifth, uh, five units sold, all at a price of $6. Six times five is 30. Total revenue is the total, rev or average revenue is the total revenue divided by the quantity. So 30 divided by five is six. We see that average revenue is equal to price. And then we take a look, what is the difference between 28 and 30? It is two. So at the quantity demanded of five, the marginal revenue is two, which we see plotted here at five units, the marginal revenue is at $2. And we see that marginal revenue curve continuing to diverge. We keep going. The firm wants to sell an additional unit, but they're gonna to have to drop price for all consumers. Here is $5, six people willing to spend, $5 on, on that good or service. Five times six is 30. What is the difference between 30 and 30? It's nothing, there's no change there. And the average revenue is total revenue divided by the quantity of 30 divided by six, which is five. So when we get to the uh, sixth unit sold, we see that the MR curve has hit zero, which is at this point here. Okay, it's hit zero. Now we've looked at a previous video um, when MR hits zero, this is an important point to highlight, and we've discussed this in other videos, and I'll just draw a line straight through that point. When MR hits zero, this is where total revenue is at maximum. We have another video, video illustrating total revenue as a parabola, and it would be maximized where MR is hitting zero because the marginal revenue curve is the derivative of the total revenue function. And also highlights that on our demand curve right here, this is where the price elasticity of demand is equal to one. Above this point on the demand curve, this is where PED 
is elastic or greater than one, and then below this point, this is where PED is inelastic or less than one. So that's important to recognize that when MR hits zero, that's where the demand curve is unit elastic, and then the part uh, beyond, or the upper part of the demand curve is the elastic portion, and the lower part is the inelastic portion. And it also highlights where the total revenue function is at maximum. So revenue maximum maximization would be achieved at that six unit of output, okay? Let's keep going. So the firm wants to sell an addition unit. They drop price from five to four. And here they have seven people willing to uh, pay. Four times seven is 28. And then we see what is the change. It's now negative two. And we know that average revenue is the same as price. So I'll just go ahead and write that down here. And here we see that the marginal revenue uh, curve is going into negative territory. So at that seventh unit of output, it's at negative two, which I can now illustrate here. Okay, and it just keeps going down. And I can now label this as the marginal revenue curve. And just to fill out the rest of the information, here we can have uh, a $3. We'll assume that eight people are willing to consume. Three times eight is 24. The difference between 28 and four, 24 is negative four. Average revenue is the same as price, so that's $3. And then we go to the uh, price falling from three to two. We're gonna charge $2 for all consumers. Assuming that there's nine consumers, two times nine is 18. The change from 24 to 18 is negative six. And AR is the same as price, so here is two. And so we've completed all the data to illustrate. And hopefully with this, we can understand why um, downward sloping demand curves have a marginal revenue curve that is less, that the MR curve is less than the AR curve, because we're assuming that the firm does not price discriminate, that they're dropping price for all consumers, and it causes that divergence. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much.